I was truly the luckiest person in the world to meet Peter and to have had 30 years of marriage with him. Uh, we had four very happy, healthy, wonderful children uh, that we both enjoyed raising together. He uh, was a great dad, a terrific husband, a wonderful friend to many. Unfortunately, in 2000, he found out that he had uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And it was very devastating to find out, but he also decided that he was gonna give it his best shot and certainly find the most talented physicians that he could possibly work with and do a lot of research on his disease and was interested in being able to help other people who not only had CLL, but who had other cancers as well or other diseases as well. Uh, I met Peter Karchis when he was graduating from Columbia Business School, so that goes back, um, it's got to be close to 30 years. Um, he and Susan were um, getting started in their new life, and we were looking to build our business, and Peter came across as a uh, kind of an uncut diamond, and um, we knew he had a lot of talent, and he joined us, and very quickly, combination of his drive and his brain power with the intuitive skill to read people better than anyone I've ever been with. Uh, it was just destined that he would be a real leader of the firm and he was. Now, Peter and I knew each other in the world of business uh, primarily uh, first and foremost. Uh, he was at uh, Morgan Stanley and I was at Viacom and we did a lot of business together from financings and mergers and acquisitions. He was a great advisor and a great friend and a trusted confidant. I'd always turn to Peter uh, if I needed advice on getting a transaction done, getting it done right, and getting it done uh, quickly. He was able to do all those things and flawlessly. That was what he was known for on Wall Street, just getting it done. He did get it done. So I met Peter in the fall of 1980. He um, interviewed me and hired me, and I worked for him for my entire 20-year career. Peter was uh, a great role model. I was very fortunate uh, to have met him. He was a uh, very ethical businessman. He was uh, and a very sharp, uh, all-around good manager. I was very lucky to have him as my boss for the 20 years. On a personal basis, he was also a great role model. Uh, he taught me about um, being honest. He taught me about being generous. He was an optimist. Like most successful people, he was a, a true optimist and never liked to dwell on what the disease could do to him or uh, take away from him, more importantly. Uh, so we, we didn't talk about that much, but early on, about five years ago, we talked about it a little, and I suggested to Peter that he uh, might think about uh, going into North Shore LIJ and, and, and dealing with uh, some of the people there who had great expertise in dealing with his particular form of disease, CLL. He said, Tom, uh, you know, the more I, I go around and learn about this disease, the more I learn that the, the right answer might be at uh, North Shore LIJ. Uh, and could you introduce me to some of the people over there, specifically uh, Drs. Conti Rai and uh, Nick Chirazi. The Feinstein Institute within the larger complex of North Shore LIJ Health System is a unique institution. Unique in that it provides a haven to first-class researchers whether they are MDs, PhDs, MD, PhDs, but who have a focused question. Nick Jorazi and I have known each other for a few decades. And more I saw, more I was impressed by this man's intellect and his commitment to first class research. So I think the research, uh, the CLL research program really can be can serve as a poster child for the Feinstein Institute. Um, it's uh, a program that focuses on disease-oriented, uh, patient-oriented translational research, which is really the ideology upon which the Feinstein is built. The program itself is an indicator of what can be done when people in the community are vested in a specific medical problem and addressing it at both a clinical and a research level. Um, the other advantage of working at the Feinstein uh, is the health system. Uh, because if you're going to do disease-oriented medical research, by definition you need to have patients uh, that are willing to participate in the problem and also patients that hopefully can benefit uh, from your research. 
Um, and the health system is, um, because of its size and the way it is uh, integrated, uh, is really an ideal place to do that type of work. This process of clinical observations linked to discovery research based on molecular targeting of diseases is occurring here at the Feinstein Institute. The collaboration between Nick Chirazi and Conti Rai to look for a cure for CLL, funded in part by Peter Karchus's generous gift. This is the future for clinical translational research, and the future is occurring now here at the Feinstein Institute. One of the things is that this institute is dealing with uh, not just looking for answers with, in test tubes, but they were, we're dealing with patients and people. And uh, while they were looking for the answers, we, we were looking to uh, help those people and, and, and make them better. We had the opportunity to move forward, and, and everyone was, was uh, of, of one mindset that, that this, we're going to make this the best uh, research institute in, in the world and whatever it takes to accomplish that, we're going to do it. You know, we've seen this a lot. You know, it's, it's um, uh, Katie Kirk with colon cancer or Michael J. Fox with Parkinson's. If, if you can somehow um, focus on a particular disease, there are so many, there are so many illnesses that, that people, you know, need help with, but if you can somehow donate, uh, get a huge chunk of, of dollars or interest towards a certain disease, you're absolutely going to make more of an impact. So one of the first things we did after uh, uh, Peter and Susan uh, made their initial contribution and pledged uh, uh, a five-year commitment to the program uh, was to go out and buy two digital uh, countdown clocks. Um, and we set them for uh, June 30th, 2010. It's something that has actually been very valuable to us in keeping in, in the front of our mind the fact that there is a sense of urgency uh, to deal with this problem, uh, that uh, we really need to conquer this disease in a relatively short period of time. I had the great pleasure to know Peter for the last 15 years, primarily as a golf friend, and of course that's a great way to learn about your friends because you spend hours and hours together, much to the exasperation of our uh, wives and family. But uh, from that experience, um, I can really say with sincerity that tonight is a great night honoring Peter. It has so many of the elements that he would hold near and dear to his heart. And in quick succession, they would be, number one, it's outdoors. He loved to be outdoors, golf, family, friends, horses, whatever it was. He loved to be outside. Secondly, he loved hot weather. Hopefully tonight will be hot, and the hotter the better for Peter. The next thing is fun. Peter was a very serious, very accomplished guy, but he knew how to have fun. And that was something that we really enjoyed most about him. Telling stories, laughing, teasing one another, um, being being together. Um, next, it's a family-oriented event. I'm sure as you look around, you'll see people with their families. And if I could say one thing about Peter, the most important thing is that he was family-oriented. And I think that's something that, speaking for myself, I most admired about him. All the other things that he accomplished, uh, all the other things that life brought him, the family was the most important. And finally, tonight's a purpose-driven night and Peter was a purposeful person. So as we gather, hopefully we can remember that the cause is cancer, and in particular CLL. Um, Peter, we miss you, uh, but we're gonna continue on with the kind of things that you held important.